I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 7th of December, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life, living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, we had a really busy day of just running around doing errands, a lot of work, a lot of good stuff, and we're exhausted. But tonight, and by tonight, I mean middle of the afternoon, about three o'clock, we all piled in the car and headed out to the beach at Las Benitas. We're gonna be telling you about the soft opening of the new restaurant, Desperados, out on the beach today. It's gonna to be a short episode, and I didn't get a lot of time to film on this, but I wanted to bring, this is our daily events today, and uh, I know we've had such a great week with so many people watching and joining the channel. It's fantastic. Today's a little bit of a short one. It's the middle of the week, so a lot fewer people tend to watch in the middle of the week. We've had explosive growth over the last several days so hoping you guys enjoy something a little bit different as we talk about what it's like checking out the new restaurant we're gonna get to that right after the bump We really couldn't have asked for a much better day as we headed out to Las Penitas, where we were checking out the new restaurant that was opening at four o'clock today. I have not been in for a month. I was there when they were doing some early stuff, got to look around and have not seen anything since. So this was all a huge surprise for me. We were told by a lot of people they're coming to the opening today. So we're expecting a pretty decent crowd considering there's no signage and it's not an official grand opening. This is a soft opening. It's worth noting that today is the Purissima. This is the big celebration here in Leon, and so uh, the party kind of goes on for a few days. It's a long weekend. What happens today is the start of it, and that means a lot of people are out doing events on the ground, and mostly in Leon or in the Leon barrios uh, in the evening, which is really cool. If you travel around in Leon, it's just people everywhere on the street. People are setting up food carts all along the sides of the road. Uh, everyone's like having meals on the street and like floating carnivals and there's people walking everywhere even way out in like Sutiava and far-flung barrios you have streets just full of people walking everywhere it was very dangerous driving around on these days but it was it was very nice I do have to preface that I'm suffering still from my cough I've had this for over a week I'm I think a tiny bit better I got quite a bit worse for a while everyone's been sick so we're we're all struggling with this this really heavy cough going on but I'm doing my best and I'm able to talk quite a bit more than I was. Uh, so we started off, just Paul Dominic and I went out in the early uh, time when the sun was going down. So we managed to catch the sunset. The views are fantastic. We had a fair number of people out on the beach. This is not a big beach day so that there's anybody is, is kind of nice. Uh, we managed to get into the restaurant right as they opened the doors. Uh, it's the first time hitting the bar and I got surprised. I had no idea there was going to be draft beer there. Three different Moro Potente beers on draft. I've only seen one or two draft machines in all of Nicaragua since we've lived here. So for over a period of about three years now, I'm gonna preface this. Yes, I've seen draft machines down in San Juan del Sur at the brewery, that's a little bit different. And there is a brewery in Leon, Cerro Negro, who does a very nice job, and they have draft there in house. Outside of the breweries, I've only seen a couple of restaurants that have beers on tap. Notably, Cajun in the Galleria has two Moro Potente beers on draft, which I was very excited when I discovered that recently, about six to nine months ago. And the Hard Rock Cafe had Tonya on tap. That's not as exciting because you get Tonya by bottle absolutely anywhere, so it's not that special. Getting it on draft is nice, but the Hard Rock Cafe recently went out of business, so that has kind of taken that away. That this was three Moro Potente on draft is the best draft selection I've literally seen in Nicaragua outside of the breweries, so very excited that that's right here. And it immediately did so well that there's talk of going to six taps. So that would be unbelievably cool. We had stout on draft. And of course, Dominica immediately is like, got to get a drawn stout. That's She's been looking forward to that. This is very cool. Uh, and so we, we hung out at the bar a little bit. We had some time to just chill. A lot of people showed up, tons of our friends. So we had a really nice turnout, watch the sunset and relax. It was very warm with the sun beating in, but it was quite nice. After we were there for a couple hours, I ran back into Leon to pick up uh, the kids because they were going to come down for dinner and to also pick up Marcella and her kids as they were getting ready and they came down too. So we had uh, two huge car loads heading out to the beach. So it took a little while before I was able to go down and do that. So we had a very busy evening hanging out there all evening, but it was really cool. So many people turned out. Uh, and Ronnie was playing guitar, Betsy was singing, so there was a lot of cool live music. When I first got there though, 
uh, I had not had a chance to meet Darren, who's the owner of Jake's on the Beach, who lives directly next door to uh, Desperado. So I got there, Jake, the, the dog, the huge dog who lives next door, came over and got me and, and brought me over to Jake's on the Beach. So I actually spent the early bit of the sunset hanging out over at Jake's with Darren, who is a fan of this channel and knows me from here. Uh, and, and so we got a couple hours hanging out before I ran in to pick everyone up and then dinner was after that. So it was a very nice, but a very busy evening. A lot of driving all over the place to get people to and from, but at least once I came back, I was able to partake of the beers because Paul would be driving back at the end of the night. He had to do two trips back when things were done. There was uh, so many people to bring back, we didn't fit in one car load, but it was a cool evening and a new space. And it's a big deal to have a place like Las Bonitas have a full new venue open up because it's a tiny beach and a lot of things have just closed and stagnated over the last few years. So since the time that we first came back, a few things have changed, but most of them have been pretty small. This is the first that a full-scale restaurant has opened since we've been back, and it's going to make a big difference for going out in Las Benitas. There's just a lot more to do, more variety, uh, and new beer that we haven't had before. There's new food items. I had a tofu steak for dinner. Not my favorite thing, but once in a while, it's nice to have something different. And this is one of the very few restaurants that has salmon in the region here in Leon. We only know of two places that have salmon, one being Barbaro, where my daughter Liesl had her quinceanera, and one other here in town. And the other we really don't go to. So that's something that we like to get a lot. Uh, and it's very rare that we can do it. And Barbaro has one salmon item, so it's very limiting. So that there's salmon now on the beach as well is a big deal. That really gives us as vegetarians or ovo pescatarians a lot more variety. So... I got some pictures. I didn't take a lot of video. Uh, we were very busy. I was hanging out with Darren for a really long time until the sun went down and then it wasn't so bright. So I didn't get a chance to do like a tour of the place or anything. I will get that in the future. Uh, they don't have a lot of things. They don't even have signs up at this at this point at Desperados, uh, but it is open and you are able to especially go for beer at this point. Um, but it was cool getting to go to the soft opening and we're told that the grand opening is likely going to be just a little bit before Christmas, but not much before because that there's a lot to be done yet. They're still doing construction. When we walked in, they were still hanging the lights in the walkway and putting up some of the walls, like const actual construction was still going on as we walked in. So this was very much a just in time to get it open. The whole thing has happened very quickly, but everyone on the beach has been very interested and it seems like a pretty cool thing. We're also told that in just about two weeks from the time that the video will come out or no, the day that it's on. So about a week from the time you see the video that, and I don't know the name of it, I really need to figure this out, but our friend Mike is opening a Mexican restaurant. It's not going to be a full opening with the full restaurant, I'm told, I believe at this point, but he is getting uh, at least the, the structure up and they're opening like a taco restaurant, which eventually I think it's going to be like a full service Mexican restaurant, like, like much fancier and a very big <laughs> menu. But for now it is just, uh, I think tacos and burritos and that kind of stuff. But that's the first one we're going to have that on the beach. We've not had Mexican, which is a huge gap for those of us living on the beach. And I'm also told that uh, the Hotel Tranquilo may be looking at opening a, an Asian place. It will not be uh, one of the big restaurants. It's going to be one of the like little hotel boutique places where it is possible to get one or two tables. Still very important. We've had no Asian, no Mexican. There's so many things we don't have in Leon in general, let alone on the beach. Uh, getting some of that variety on the beach is a really big deal. And eventually it could lead to the beach becoming a food destination, which is really what's needed, I think, for Las Benitas. San Juan del Sur really benefits. And, and often when people say, why do you like going to San Juan del Sur? Yes, the late night party on the beach is special. Yes, the fact that you can walk around town and do a bunch of stuff, that's special. And that it's a bay and not a surfing village, also special. There's a bunch of little things that are pretty nice. But the thing that really drives me to want to go to San Juan del Sur Yes, being able to stay in, in a hotel in the middle of town and walk to like everything, that, that is legit, that, that's a big deal. But that it has this big variety of food. I can go out for sushi, I can go out for Mexican, I can do any number of places on the beach. There's a lot of variety. Uh, even if I feel like the similar food day after day, I can go to different restaurants to get it. But there's also gelato, there's also uh, upscale Nicaraguan, there's standard Nicaraguan, there's all these different things. And there's street food at night, and, and that really makes for a much larger culinary experience. None of it is super exotic, uh, but it's, it rivals Leon in a very small space. Of course, it doesn't touch Managua, but it makes for a smaller beach community just a way better food experience that we're get, than we can get anywhere else in the country. And uh, I think Las Panitas has the potential to move in that direction. It'll never be the same variety, but it could go in that direction and become a pretty decent food destination 
if everybody pulls together and, and keeps it moving in the right way. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That would mean a lot to me and for all my supporters. Thank you so much. It really does make a difference. It makes all this possible. If you could take a moment to hit that like button, uh, post the link for this, share it to social media, to Reddit or, or Facebook or LinkedIn, whatever. And uh, of course, tell friends, family about the show. Take a moment, watch an extra episode, and I will see all of you tomorrow.